said, my name is Shelley Bazelak and I'm an OSU Lake County Master Gardener volunteer. Try it that way, okay. The Master Gardeners um, work out of the Lake County Extension and the Extension is not just Master Gardening, they also do Family and Consumer Sciences, 4-H and Youth Development, Community Development, and Agricultural and Natural Resources. And we are a part of the Agricultural. Now we have moved. You might think of us at, in our old location, but we're not there anymore. We are at 105 Main Street in Suite B402. If you wanna to talk to a master gardener, um, you will call the helpline number, which is 853-2634. And the main office, if you wanna get a hold of us for something else, is 853-2625. You can also find us on Facebook and you have to put in Ohio State University Extension dash Lake County Master Gardeners. If you just put in the Lake County Master Gardeners, you're very likely to end up with the Florida group. You can find us online at lake.osu.edu. We have a new Master Gardener bookmark. It gives you our phone number and it tells you a little bit um, about what we do. You can find these throughout the community. Libraries usually have a stack. Sometimes the um, uh, garden centers have some, but we not only do helpline and we, we do the Meet Us in the Garden program and every March we do the Home Gardeners Workshop. We help maintain the Peace Garden at the fairgrounds and we have an instructional garden in the Juvenile Justice Center and they get to use those with their meals. We also uh, participate in the Lake Metro Parks programs such as Earth Day and Bug Day. And we have various school programs, community presentations and library displays. Now this talk is on container gardening. What is it? Have you thought about that recently? And what are you expecting to hear? Container gardening has come a long way. It's just not those flowers your mom threw in a pot. Container gardening is basically just growing plants in containers. And this might be what you're used to seeing. What would you use as a container? Is there a size limit? And what would you put in it? This is what you think of normally when you think about containers. You think of your clay pots or your plastic pots or your glazed ceramic pots, but is there anything else you could use? What about an old commode? I know people are laughing right now, but it actually happens 40 plus years ago, Bud's uncle, my husband's uncle had a commode in their backyard attached to their house filled with flowers and his wife was mortified. Or how about an old boot, especially if it has a hole in it? That's good drainage. How about maybe an old boat that's no longer seaworthy? I have seen one of these displayed like this in a front yard on Lakeshore, somewhere between Willowick and Mentor. Or what about a wading pool? This person, has created a whole vegetable garden on a rooftop somewhere, and they've used the kitty wading pools. I think these over here are probably herbs, but look at all the vegetables growing here. How about a whiskey barrel or a wheelbarrow? Or two by fours nailed together in any size square or rectangle to make a raised bed. These are available in the garden centers online, or you could create them yourself. How about an old bathtub outside or inside? Or this person has used an old tire. You are limited only by the size of your imagination. The list could go on and on. Yes, we still put out annuals for spots of color like 
the saddle planter. But how about planting a salad garden, a blueberry bush, a Japanese maple, tomato plants, or potatoes in a container? Most anything you put in your yard can be put in a container. Just make sure to match the size of the container to the plant. Now, why would one garden in a container? You might need a show of color. You might want some vertical interest. You may be renting. You may be in a condo. You might not have very much time or space or energy. And elevated beds may just be physically easier for you to tend. You may just want an herb or two for cooking, like putting them on your windowsill. The reasons are as varied as the individuals who garden. Some people will make displays in gardens using only containers. This is one such display. It is all on the person's patio and these plants are all in containers. Now, you ask, what should I grow? First, you have to figure out what you wanna plant. We have all seen a clump of annuals potted and put in hanging baskets or in flower boxes, and that's fine. But singular plantings can be boring. Try mixing it up. Bring a variety of color, texture, and species to your container. One of the local garden center owners says, use a thriller, a spiller, and a filler. And have you seen trees or shrubs in containers? If so, where have you seen them? Maybe outside in a parking lot? And if that's so, think about the um, ornamental trees that spring bloom in the spring. They look gorgeous, but they're in these some basically cement containers in parking lots. And then they stick them way too close together. Or what about outside in a mall or inside in a mall? Have you ever been to a mall and seen ficus trees? Those are all in containers. What about herbs? Many of us have windowsill herbs or you could even plant a salad, lettuce, onions, and tomatoes or over here. How about some planting some salsa? tomato, onion, cilantro, pepper, or a veggie garden. This woman has a veggie garden in a raised container and she looks like she's getting a lot of good vegetables from it. And there are vegetables that are easy to grow. You can have radishes, lettuce, spinach, kale, carrots, peas, zucchini, spring onions, beets, cucumber, or tomatoes. Now, when do you want to plant those vegetables? March to early April, you can do potatoes, peas, and onions. Mid eight to late April, cauliflower, collards, kohlrabi, cabbage, broccoli, radish, lettuce, beets, and spinach. Late April to early May, you can start your bush beans. And mid to late May, pole beans, corn, cucumber, tomatoes, peppers, squash, watermelon, cantaloupe, or lima beans. If you're putting a vegetable in a container and it's round, each container should, it be, should be at least one foot in diameter. The minimum is six inches deep and one plant per 12 inches of diameter. But you could also build yourself a square foot garden elevated if you want, or just in a square container. I will show you something similar to that when I go outside. And if you do it four by four, that would give you 16 square feet and 16 plants. Have you ever thought about planting a perennials or bulbs in your containers? Why not? It can be done. I gave a friend of mine a miniature um, butterfly bush and she lives in an apartment. She has it in a lovely container uh, right on her patio. And here is a container garden. They also seem to have dirt down there but they have all these plants in containers. 
And this is how you would plant bulbs in containers. The large ones like the tulips there go on the bottom and the smaller grape hyacinths are put on the top. Always start with the largest at the bottom and the smaller ones on top. Now the how-to. Make sure that your chosen pot will accommodate your mature plant size, not how they come to you if you buy them somewhere. It, you have to think about the mature size. And this is also true when you're planting outside in your normal garden. You don't wanna squish everything too close together. But this is especially true with vegetables, bushes, or trees. There needs to be ample space for root development. If you're using an old container, you need to make sure that it is clean. For metal containers that are woven or made with wire, you may wanna add some of these coconut fiber liners. They will hold the soil in and they will help retain moisture. Now let's get planting. You will need a clean container with drainage holes. If there aren't any present, either find a different container or drill them in like this person is doing. Always use new and fresh planting material. Never reuse material from the year before in pots that are able to be emptied. You can either buy potting soil from your local garden center or you can mix it yourself. Personally, I prefer to buy it already made up. If you are using large raised beds, as the picture with a woman gathering vegetables, you may use topsoil and then amend it as you would an in-ground garden. Here is a potting soil recipe. At the end of it, the soil should be loose, well-drained, and have plenty of organic ma matter in it. You mix one part of peat moss or compost, one part pasteurized soil, one part vermiculite or perlite, and some composted cow manure. Now, take note that soil mixes tend to hold water better than those soilless mixes. I'm sure you've all had the experience when you go and you buy a bag of potting soil that it's very light and it tends to blow away. However, if you're going to be moving your container from place to place, use a soilless mixture, especially if it is big. And because the soilless mixture is lighter and it's easier to move. There are also wheeled plant stands available, which make these finished large containers easier on your back, if easier to move. And it's easier on your back that way. I have one that I'm going to show you. Now, prepare your pot, make sure it's clean. You don't want it harboring any disease from last year. If it's porous, then submerge it to moisten it, like a clay pot, you'd submerge it to moisten. Put some pebbles or a coffee filter over the drainage holes so that the dirt does not flow out. If the container is large or heavy, you may wanna put it on one of those movable stands. And you can also put some styrofoam peanuts in the bottom. Just make sure they're not the type that disintegrate with water. The first thing you do is you mix in about half a tablespoon of Osmocote or other balanced fertilizer to one gallon of soil medium. If you're planting veggies, make sure that the fertilizer is one that specifically says it is for veggies or human consumption. That's very important. You don't wanna eat, put fertilizer that's going to be on a plant that's eaten that is not specifically for vegetables or human consumption consumption. Balanced fertilizer is one that has the same percentage of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Osmocote is a 14-14-14. I like to use my hands because I like to feel the soil, but you can mix with any suitable tool. You want to mix in the fertilizer because the soil in a pot will quickly become depleted of nutrients during the growing season. 
In this step, some people like to mix in those water holding gel crystals that soak up water and slowly release it back into the soil. Next, moisten the mixture slightly. Then if you will need to stake the plant, this is the time to put the stake in the pot. Now add the soil mixture about halfway. Now you're gonna be putting your plants in the pot. Start arranging again with the largest ones first. Fill in with smaller plants and add dirt up to two inches below the top of con the container. Do not overfill. This is where I get into trouble. I tend to overfill the container. <laughs> and then all the dirt flows at the top when you water it. So try to make sure it's two inches below the top of the container. If you're planting in a raised bed, put a lining inside of them if they are on your patio. These are so large that I would purchase the topsoil and then amend it with compost, which can also be purchased from a local merchant. You're going to have to maintain your plant, your containers, and it's just like maintaining your garden. You may need to deadhead, you may need to weed, and you need to check for pests regularly. If you find any, please follow proper pest management procedures. And if you're unsure as to how to deal with it, feel free to call the Master Gardener Helpline at 440-853-2634. We are open on Tuesdays, April through October, 9 a.m. through 11. Now, normally you will have a live person in our office, but because of COVID, we are still doing this remotely and you will get our answering machine. On Tuesdays, we do check the messages between 9 and 11 and we will call you back. You will be talking to a live person and we will, if you leave it, other times during the week, we will get back to you as soon as possible. One thing to remember about your containers is that they dry out faster than in-ground plants. You might wanna use the finger test, stick your index finger about an inch into the soil. If some of it sticks to your finger, the soil is moist enough. Watering twice a day is not unusual if the containers are outside in the summer. You may wanna try adding some ice cubes to a container as, you're watering, as a watering mechanism. They will melt slowly and reduce the frequency that you need to water. Once a week as you water, be sure to use a water soluble fertilizing product such as miracle Grow. And here again, if you have vegetables, make sure that you get the correct one that is labeled for vegetables. At the end of the season, if you haven't planted your perennials in your containers, get rid of your potting soil from your container. This is important. Don't save it to next year. The soil is depleted of all the nutrients and it could harbor disease or pest. The best thing to do is throw it away. However, some people do elect to return it to your outside garden and incorporate it into the soil there. However, You've got to remember, you could be putting disease or pest back into your outside garden. So it's up to you. Finally, scrub out each container thoroughly using a weak 10% bleach solution. Dry it thoroughly and store it. Of course, if your container is a large raised bed in the yard, skip this part <laughs> and enjoy your containers. <laughs> As you can see, here I have my fertilizer, and it's for flower and vegetable garden. Here I have my wheeled little thing I'm going to put the flower pot on when I'm done. Here, <laughs> here are my soil moist uh, crystal gels. And I'm, as you can see, I think I hope you can see it. It does have pictures of vegetables on it, but I would call the company before you um, put it in with vegetables. And here is my pot with holes. 
and I am putting some garden fabric in the bottom because it was too big for a coffee filter. I'm putting on some gloves because I don't want dirt under my fingernails. And I am going to start filling my pot. I'm also going to get on a stool. So if you, because I am extremely short and I have to be able to reach into the pot. If you see me getting up and down, don't worry about it. However, if you see me sprawled on the ground, then worry. So here again, I'm using both soil and potting mix. And since this is a large pot, it's going to take a while to fill up. Once they get lighter, I'll be able to just put them in. Um, the pot itself. As you can see, I came outside because it's quite messy. So, I hope you're thinking of questions and asking, putting them in the uh, Q and A so that Susan can uh, share them with me. Okay, I filled this to about the right spot to start putting in the first plant, and I'm going to add my fertilizer. Now I cook like this, so the instructions say half a tablespoon to a gallon. And now you just blend that in. I'm also gonna put in some of the gel crystals here. And this is a lot less, it's a half a teaspoon per gallon. So just blend that in. I'm gonna start with my largest plant. It will not need staking, so I'm not going to put a stake in. I'm digging a hole in the center, and I'm going to put this in because this is going to stick up farther when it's fully grown. It's a palladium, and it's going to stick up farther than the rest of them. I take it out of this little pot it came in, and I like to stimulate the roots a little bit and I just put it in there and then you bury it a little bit now I'm going I pre-mix this soil and um pot mix a little earlier so that I could just add some to it putting that in there a little bit. Now I'm going to add what we call the filler here. And I brought out the same color as what's going to, as the largest plant. And I'm gonna put these in here. Dig little holes for each one.
and put them in just enough so they don't fall over and I'm gonna add more soil to it. Add the rest of this soil that I pre mixed with fertilizer and some of the crystals. And now I'm going to dig the holes for the outside edge of the plants. And I'm kind of stimulating the roots here. And these will all get larger. So I've given them plenty of room to grow throughout the season. Now you know why I wanted to do this outside because I am not the neatest gardener. So instead of having me um, cleaning up my house afterwards, I thought I'd do it upside and any soil can be taken into my grass. Okay. I will throw a little bit more planting material on the top, make sure everything's covered well. And I can even put, I have some extra of these, I have a little more room in here. I'm going to put some more of these. Just for some color. This is not a, um, A pot, this is a pot that will be all foliage color, no flowers. And it'll be interesting to look at. And now I'm gonna take my watering container and water it in. And it'll take a couple days to look really pretty when the, everything settles. Let me take you out of here and show you. Can you all see that? Thank you for the opportunity that I had to share this with you.